So I thought I'd relate a strange, um, I suppose one could call it paranormal, but certainly Fortean experience that I had um, many, many years ago, 35 years ago, in fact, when I lived in Adelaide, South Australia. So I'd been seeing my girlfriend who was at a Catholic residential college on Montefiore Hill. And there's a statue there. And, um, you know, one thing had led to another. So I was sneaking out of the college and actually walking home um, at about 2.30 in the morning. So Montefiore Hill is just like a grass, or it was, I don't know, maybe it's not anymore, but it was basically just like open grass, um, adjoined by roads and just led to normal sort of out of CBD roads and avenues. But when I walked across it, um, there was a generator and a portable floodlight pointing down into a hole cut into the ground. And there was another power cable from the generator going down the hole. And there was no one around and there were no fences or anything like that around the, the hole. So being me, I walked up to the hole and looked down and it was basically jet black. Um, there was very, very light rain, almost mist falling. And remember, it's 2.30, it's pitch black. There's the city lights in the distance. Other than the floodlight, it's pretty dark. Residential college is in darkness. The generator is making quite loud noise, which is what originally attracted my attention. But I looked into the hole and then I couldn't tell you why. Just something came over me and I looked at the thickness of the cable going down into the hole and it was about three times the diameter of a normal electrical cord. So it seemed quite sturdy. Using that cable, I climbed down into the hole and actually ended up sort of half slithering down the cable a considerable distance. At the bottom, the cable terminated in a metal cage protected, very powerful light, a little bit like a light on some old ships. So it's a sort of um, bullet shaped metal case and cage with a very bright light. And the bright light illuminated um, what looked like something from at the time I thought late 19th century, but I mean, I'd, I had no real way of knowing, but um, basically an approximately five metre square landing. And there was a constant kind of noise, not from the generator, but from a metal brass, metal, leather and wood escalator going down. And the escalator was wide enough for two people to stand on. So I looked back up to where the floodlight was pouring down through the top of the hole and where this electrical cable slithered down to where I was. And being, you know, again, being me, being that sort of person, I um, descended on the escalator. I stood on it. It went down into absolute darkness. And it became freezing cold. And I kept on riding it. And it became slightly warmer again. And then it became quite warm. I was wearing a leather jacket and leather gloves. Uh, and a sort of skivvy top and jeans and um, boots. And um, the jacket was becoming almost uncomfortable to wear given the warmth. The escalator ended at an almost identical landing to the one at the top where I came in. And looking back from that bottom landing, the light bulb in that metal cage was basically just like a dot of light. But on the opposite side of the lower landing from the escalator, there was a door, three wooden panels. The middle panel had a brass handle on it, ornate handle. Again, to my eyes, it seemed late 19th century, but I'm not an expert. And in the middle of that middle panel 
was a gargoyle or satyr type face which was screwed on. And so while I was standing there in almost darkness, because the lower landing actually had faint light, which didn't really come from anywhere, there was almost a kind of oh, pinky bronze, very faint iridescence in the air which is how I saw the door. So it wasn't in like deep shadow and bright light. It was just a kind of very faint, pinky, reddy, brown phosphorescence and a warm atmosphere. And other than the kind of ka chunka ta 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 chunka chunka from the escalator, there was no other noise. So I was debating whether to push and pull on the door to see what was behind it. And I already knew that there were extensive tunnels, almost like Dungeons and Dragons dungeon tunnels, all the way under Adelaide, from Port Adelaide at the coast, all the way into the hills to Crafers and so on. And that Adelaide itself was built on a square grid by Freemasons. They were the original free settlers who created the place. And Adelaide is the city of churches, but not necessarily Christian churches as a 19th century lady author put it, um, I was debating what to do when there was a clank from the other side of the door and the phosphorescence immediately, to put it, you know, in simple terms, it went out, the phosphorescence shut out, so it was pitch black. So I looked around fairly wildly, not in a complete panic, but certainly, shall we say, very concerned. I saw that pinpoint of light oriented on that and ran up the escalator because it was moving very slowly. So I actually ran up the escalator and heard another loud clank echoing, presumably from the door, ran all the way up the top of the escalator, heard somebody or something clumping up the escalator after me, grabbed onto that cable and basically scaled and clambered back up onto the soil and then onto the turf next to the generator heard somebody let out a yell from the street in the opposite direction from the residential college. And then I basically just sprinted out of there all the way back to where my rental house was. And when I got there, I immediately called a friend of mine who lived basically two streets over, who was an atheist scientist, but had an interest in the verifiable paranormal. So in other words, didn't believe silly stories without proof, but if a silly story in quotes had proof, he was prepared to accept factual observations. So I called him immediately. This is on a landline. It's well before the modern cell phones were ubiquitous. So, you know, it was just on a landline. He answered, he was sort of groggy, but he usually went to bed very late, as did I. I told him what had happened and what I'd seen. And he said he'd be around immediately. So I'm just sitting in my house, all the doors and windows closed and locked. <laughs> uh, I was actually drinking a whiskey. There's a knock on the door. I go and check with the little window pane next to the door. It's him. His Peugeot's idling outside. I let him in. We talked briefly and he said, well, we should go back there and see what it is. And he'd, he'd come with a big waterproof, you know, yachtsman type torch. And he'd actually also brought a yellow hard hat with a spotlight on it, almost like a caver would, would use. Because he's a very well equipped man. He was a at the, the time he was getting his light plane license and all sorts, he was you know, one of these sort of pragmatist adventurers. So anyway, in his Peugeot, we set a land speed record getting back to Montefiore Hill. We pull up. There is not a sign of anything. No floodlight, no generator, and strangest of all, no hole. So... His car's idling again. He's holding on the steering wheel. He looks at me and he's like, I know you well enough to know you're not putting me on or making some sort of stupid jokes. So what's going on? Did you hallucinate it? I absolutely didn't hallucinate it. Well, let's get out and have a look. So we get out and have a look. He takes his big waterproof torch, doesn't take his hard hat. Um, we walk over. I orient on the statue so I can point out approximately where that hole was. There's no sign of anything. 
residential college is in complete darkness other than the little foyer light and the side light, which are on 24 seven. Um, presumably there's a Jesuit padding around the corridors as they often did, but there was no sign of any activity. The houses across the avenue from this sort of little parkland next to the statue, all dark, no cars, cars in the distance, no cars. But we look at the turf, all we could find was, you know, when you get topsoil and you scatter it on turf, so there's little sort of lumps and particles of soil. There was that dispersed over an area of the turf, but we absolutely couldn't find any seam or clear marking to indicate where the hole had been specifically, but we could absolutely pace out and mark out roughly where it had been. And then my friend was suggesting, well, what do you want to do? Like, um, we'd previously found a tunnel entrance, like an, an urbex type expedition. We'd found a tunnel entrance at what was then the Maya Centre construction site. Uh, and there was another one at the John Martin's department store that a girl we both knew from school, we met her at the Robin Hood pub and she'd drunkenly been telling us about accidentally stumbling into the basement of the John Martin's department store and finding a bloody door to nowhere, as she called it. But it was actually a door down to a another lower level and then to a very old sort of cellar and a tunnel which went under the British pub and all the rest of it so being adventurous sorts at the time we were you know planning our next move and then we both had a very very odd prickly back of neck cold water down the spine reaction we both actually shuddered as though the temperature had changed and we just looked at each other and like yeah well whatever we're going to do let's get out of here go and have a coffee plan our next move so we went back to my rental and, you know, we talked until well past dawn about it, as we often did when we were computer programming or designing robotics or, you know, whatever we were into at the time. Um, we put 100 hours in almost without sleep writing an AI program at one point, for example. So we were well used to sort of strange hours. Um, but the upshot was, and this was rare for us because we were both young, arrogant, fearless, you know, upper class twit and upper class thug in some ways. But anyway, we were sort of fairly fearless and like, oh, you know, what are you going to do? You know, blah, blah, blah. But we both petered out and came to the same conclusion that it's a serious business. It's not the normal casual exploring old tunnels or, you know, independent order of odd fellows or, you know, Grand Hall of the Freemasons or, you know, Forbidden Temple of uh, Horrifying Mysteries. It's actually a real structured old thing and as I said casually after dawn before he finally adjourned and drove off um, not too sure I want to go back to an escalator that's of a similar vintage to Jack the Ripper now I don't know why I said Jack the Ripper and not Sherlock Holmes or Queen Victoria or something but it planted the seed in our head that um, as had been the case with another experience of tunnels in Adelaide which um I might tell the story of another time. There's a tremendous disproportionate number of disappearances in Adelaide. It's um, very much like Santa Carla out of the original Lost Boys film from the 1980s, put it that way. So um, we mutually agreed to think better of trying to probe that escalator tunnel and that ornate door. It all smacked of um, Silver Star and Alistair Crowley and some of the other unpleasant nastiness that is just below the surface in Adelaide. But there you go. I wouldn't say a paranormal experience because presumably it's a physical location, just one that's not normally visible or detectable. But I would definitely consider that to be a Fortean experience. But... Um, it struck me in all the decades since that as arrogant and fearless and um, overly intellectual and dispassionate as my friend and I were and the looking back on it, staggering things that we discovered and did. That one, that escalator and then seeing that it had been covered up in about 
30 minutes from when somebody yelled at me and I sprinted home. Um, 30 minutes at best, possibly less. That one triggered our vestigial common sense. And so we never returned to it. But hey, if you're tired of being alive and you've got nothing better to do in Adelaide and you can find the quiet time to find a tunnel entrance to it or perhaps simply to dig under the statue on Montefiore Hill or see if there's a hidden door there, which undoubtedly there would be because most of the statues in Adelaide have a secret door in their base. Um, give it a go, but I, I take no responsibility if you go dungeoneering there and don't come back. Pleasant dreams. <laughs>